In this lesson we're going to be looking at rational functions once again, something we covered in a previous lesson. I'm just going a little bit further with it, which is how do we put together a graph or at least a sketch of a rational function. Now there are several things we need to take into consideration. First of all, just a reminder, when we're talking about a rational function, we are talking about something in the form, for example here I say h of x is equal to f of x over g of x. So what we have in the rational functions we're discussing, we actually have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. And the fact that we're doing a division means we always have to be wary of two possibilities. We have to be worried about 0 divided by 0. And 0 divided by 0, that means we're going to get a whole. And we also have to be worried about a constant divided by 0. And when we have a constant divided by 0, that's where we're going to get a vertical asymptote. So we have to be worried about discontinuities in general. So I say, I mention holes here, and that's just because we're going to be looking for asymptotes later. Holes are the first kind of discontinuity you're going to identify because they disappear when you do this work. So let's go ahead and run through this list. We're looking for discontinuities. Then we're looking at our intercepts. We could be looking at multiple x-intercepts. We might have no x-intercepts. It's always possible. And we're looking for a y-intercept. In general, we will have a y-intercept, except for the case where we have either a hole or a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Right. So if for some reason we end up with a restriction at x equals 0, then of course we're not going to have a y-intercept. As far as asymptotes go, vertical asymptotes are any restrictions that are left over after we divide out uh, any common factors. Horizontal and oblique asymptotes, those are going to be defining the end behavior of our graph or our sketch. Also useful is looking at the positive and negative intervals. And for finding that out, that's introducing this idea. We've looked at interval tables in the past. If we do an interval table where we use our zeros and our vertical asymptotes as our kind of dividing values, if we set up our intervals using zeros and vertical asymptotes, we can identify these positive and negative intervals. And then we want to look at end behavior. Well, I say this, I, I add this to the list just to make you aware of it. But if you know what your horizontal or oblique asymptotes are, you really are covering end behavior there. And if you know where your vertical asymptotes are and you know where things are positive and negative, you should be able to come up with a pretty good idea of what your behavior is at any vertical asymptotes. As is the case with these, although end behavior and the behavior at any ver vertical asymptotes, you're trying to figure out what the trend is, you can always just substitute in some numbers and then you can get a very concrete idea of how your function is behaving. For end behavior we can put in really large and large negative and large positive numbers. For behaviors at the vertical asymptotes we can choose values that are near a vertical asymptote. So for example if we had a vertical asymptote at x equal 2 then we might try for example we might try 2.1 and we might try 1.9 and that would give us an idea of how the how the function is behaving as I get closer and closer and I might even have to do something like try 2.01 and try 1.99 so I might have to improve my understanding of how it behaves now for our example here I've chosen something fairly simple and this is just a linear over a linear so I've asked to sketch this graph. Now, in order to sketch this, the first thing I need to watch out for is discontinuities. That means that you're going to want factored form. And so I'm going to continue this on the next page. But for here, I just want to point out to you, factoring is by far the most important thing to do. And the first type of factoring we always look for is common factors. So I see a common factor here between 4 and 10 is the number 2. And then I factor out, I end up with 2x minus 5. And then the denominator, I end up with 2x plus 5. So that's the first thing we need to look for, is whether or not there are any common factors here. Now, before I go on to any of these other items, 
I just want to come back to something because we've talked about how to find the horizontal asymptote. And the way we've looked at it, and actually this applies, let me say, for horizontal or oblique asymptotes. In a previous lesson, we talked about how do we find these. And I just want to mention this. I'm kind of injecting this into our conversation because I want to talk about a possible shortcut for this. And that is, we talked about doing this using long division. And that works just fine. So in this case, I could take 2x plus 5 and I could divide it into 4x minus 10. And when I do that long division, in this case I'm going to come up with a horizontal asymptote. And if you don't remember the reason for that, it's because the order of the numerator and the order of the denominator are both the same. In this case, the order of the numerator is equal to 1. The order of the denominator is equal to 1. And when the order of the numerator and denominator are equal to each other, it means we have a horizontal asymptote. So if I did my long division here, I would put a 2 here. 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times 5 is 10. I do my subtraction, I end up with negative 20 as my remainder. And so it turns out that, if we just look at our original here, 4x minus 10 over 2x plus 5 is equal to 2 minus 20 over 2x plus 5. And we've talked about this being the way that we get our horizontal asymptote. Our horizontal asymptote is line y equals 2. Now there's a shortcut to doing this that we can also make use of. And I'm bringing it up now, bringing it up right away in this lesson because it has something to do with um, finding. First we check for these common factors because we want to check and see whether or not we've got a hole. A hole would occur when we have the same factor. So if this had been 2x minus 5 over 2x minus 5, let's say I had finished it that way. Well, these would have divided out, leaving me just with the expression 2. And that's why we have to do that part first. But once we've done that, which we have in this case, there were no common factors to take out. Once we've done that, take a look at the leading coefficient of the highest order term in the numerator and denominator. This is x to the power 1, and this is x to the power 1. So the coefficients of the highest order terms is 4 and 2. This is 4 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. And if you're interested, this will be in the note that I'll post online, and I'm also going to show it just here. So here's a bit of a discussion along those lines. So if we have a polynomial where it's a linear divided by a linear, the first thing we always do is look for common factors, and we worry about holes. But once we've resolved any common factors, we take a look at the highest order coefficients and your horizontal asymptote is simply the ratio between those numerator over denominator. And this will work. This will work with higher order rational functions. So for example, here I have a quadratic over another quadratic. So long as we have made sure there are no common factors to divide out here, this rule will work. And actually, it will even work with some common factors, but we have to be careful there simply because sometimes enough common factors will divide out that it'll turn into a linear, and in which case we don't have a, an asymptote anymore. We actually just have a straight line. But here you can see the x squared terms have 3 over 2, and if we did this as a long division, we would find out that this had a horizontal asymptote of 3 over 2. So something to keep in mind as we move forward. So now let's go through these steps again. So in this case, f of x, we already did the common factoring. We took out a factor of 2, and we ended up with 2x minus 5. And we took out, well, there is nothing to take out of the denominator, so that's 2x plus 5. We identify any holes, and then the next most important thing is vertical asymptotes. So we fully factored this. There are no holes to find here. As far as vertical asymptotes, we're worried about this denominator being 0. So for my vertical asymptotes, I'm worried about 2x plus 5 equal to 0. 2x equals negative 5. 
and x is equal to negative 5 over 2. So there is my vertical asymptote. I only have one of them. Zeros come from the numerator. There is no value that I can put into this denominator that's going to cause the whole function to be equal to zero. A really, really big number here will cause this denominator to be really big, which will may cause the entire function to approach zero, but it's not going to um, it's not going to actually cause it to be equal to zero. Now in this case it turns out that a really really big number here doesn't cause it to approach zero because we already determined now that we've got this factored form that from our original and it has to be you can't get your horizontal asymptote from this factored form because then you might say oh well this is 2 divided by 2 it's not it's 4 divided by 2 so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 so now what I need to do is to get zeros, zeros actually come from the numerator. And so the way that I do that is I concern myself with what values of the numerator will cause the numerator to turn, or what values of x will cause the numerator to turn into zero. And so I'm going to concern myself with 2x minus 5 equals zero. And that means that x is equal to positive 5 over 2. So now I've got my zeros. My y-intercept occurs when x equals zero. So let's put that here. My y-intercept, I'm going to set x equal to zero. I can only do that because I don't have any restrictions on x being equal to zero. And so in other words, I'm checking f of zero. And so what do I get for that? I get two times negative five over positive five. And so that works out to be the, the fives will divide out with each other, making this a negative one. So this just works out to be negative two. So there's my y-intercept. I've got my horizontal asymptote. I've got my zeros. And so there's my y-intercept. So now I have to think about behavior. And you can do this in a couple of steps if you want to. There are things that we can pick out here right away. For example, I have a vertical asymptote at negative five halves. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to worry too much about scale, but I do want these things to make sense. So, for example, if I put my vertical asymptote here, so that is x equals negative 5 over 2, and I have a, and don't forget, that's the same as negative 2.5, so I have a y-intercept here at negative 2, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Remember horizontal asymptotes describe n behavior. They don't describe behavior around the middle of the graph. They only describe the behavior at the extremes. And what else do I have? I have a 0 at 5 over 2 which is positive 2.5 so that would be over here. So I put on my y-intercept, I put on some points, and now I need to, I think I actually am going to have to move these things a little bit closer um, just to have things make sense on the graph. So I'm just going to tighten this up a little bit. I'm doing some anticipation about. So I'm just going to bring all of that a little bit closer. Okay, so from there, what I actually recommend, if we go back a couple of pages here, I say you might want to build an interval table for this. And not only is this good practice just for using interval tables, there's something else we're going to be doing soon with rational inequalities and rational equations, inequalities in particular, where we're going to be using these interval tables again. So I think I'll just extend this page. And so to do the interval table, it's like the interval tables we did in the past. I have to look at all of the factors here. now. I've got the number positive 2, but I'm really going to be careful about this one. So I'm going to include that. So down this left side, I've got the number positive 2. I'm even going to mark that it's positive 2. My numerator is the factor 2 my, 2x minus 5. And my denominator is the factor 2x plus 5. So I start with that on my interval table. And then down here is going to be my result. 
and now I have to look for whole no I don't have to worry about holes on the interval table I have to worry about vertical asymptotes and zeros so I have a vertical asymptote at negative 5 over 2 and I have a zero at positive 5 over 2 so that means I need two dividing lines so this will be at negative 5 over 2 and this one will be at positive 5 over 2 and so the interval everything to the left of this that's going to be negative infinity to negative 5 over 2 this one's going to be negative 5 over 2 to positive 5 over 2 and this one's going to be 5 over 2 to infinity so I choose a value first of all I've got this positive 2 and I just put this in there in case you haven't seen it yet that's always going to be positive so I can just go positives right across there if it was a negative I would put negatives right across now let's put in a large negative value if I put in a large negative value here you can if you need to pick a number and put it in there please go ahead if I put a large negative value in here I can see that will be negative a large negative value here that will be negative and when I multiply or divide all of these together my result is positive between negative 5 over 2 and positive 5 over 2 well a reasonable number there would be 0 if I put a 0 here that's negative if I put a 0 here that's positive and the overall result is negative and if I put in a large positive number here that's going to be positive this one is going to be positive so the result is positive so now I've put these together so I've got positive negative positive so that means and if I just mark it on my graph I know along this interval things are positive from here to here over to the zero I know things are negative and then from here to here I know things are positive okay so now I go ahead and I'll graph things so between the zero and this negative y-intercept and the asymptote that's all going to be negative so that's pretty clearly going to be a line coming down like this and then it turns positive again so that's going to take it up towards the horizontal asymptote so you end up with a curve looks something like that and then over on this other side everything is positive and it's positive and constrained by a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote and so based on our experience that would seem to indicate a curve very much like just the rational function something along those lines now if you were asked to graph this you might actually try to pick out a point here you might put in an x-coordinate and pick out a point here you might put in an x-coordinate and pick out a point over here but overall for sketching that is certainly adequate and so that I think is it that's all we need to show for this example I'm just going to it just says to sketch the graph of this I've taken into account all of my important parts and I need to remember just in case there was a hole on the graph I would have to indicate that as well so that's it fairly short lesson and you've got some homework from the textbook and I also have some additional problems I put together a worksheet for this that are a little bit more uh, a little bit more involved the ones in the textbook are generally linear over linear so I included some higher order examples I'll post those on the web page as well